Hi, this is Hans van der Krast from IG Delft. In this video I will show you some of the latest updates of the PC Raster Tools plugin and some pro tips. So make sure you've installed the latest version and uh, if you don't know how to install the plugin check the documentation and uh, other videos on this YouTube channel. Because it's a processing provider plugin you also need to install PC Raster. The resample tool is now available in the PC Raster Tools plugin. We'll start with demonstrating the resample tool with a little workflow that's quite common. I have here an extent of the study area and I want to use this uh, to create a, a clone map in PC Raster or a mask for which uh, every raster that I use in my analysis has the same dimensions. So I'm going to rasterize this polygon file with a fixed value, cell size of 30 by 30 meters and I also use the extent of this bounding box. I'll save it to mask and run this. Now the result is uh, the rasterized version of the bounding box with the extent and pixel size that I want to use in my map algebra analysis with PC Raster. So I'm going to convert it to the PC Raster format. I choose that it's Boolean and I save it uh, as clone, which is also the name used for the mask in the PC Raster terminology in the documentation. The newest version, it shows the PC Raster map files as databases. I think that's a bug, so it takes some time to see then the raster layer under it. But you could also drag the database to the map canvas and it will automatically open. Like in previous QGIS versions, we could just drag uh, the file to the map canvas. So here we see our uh, DEM, which is quite large, and I want to clip it to the extent of the bounding box is now our clone map and uh, also that it uses the same cell size and that's exactly what you use the resample tool for so here you can uh, read what you use it for so if you have multiple inputs it will stitch them together and resample them to the mask that you choose if there's one input like in our case it will resample it to the mask in our case that's the clone map and it will then take that extent and pixel size for the output. So this is uh, the usual way to make the rasters the same dimension. Note that with the OSGO4W installer for PC raster still the 4.3.1 version is used, while in Conda 4.3.2 is available. By using 4.3.2, QGIS will not crash when you use other layers than PC raster layers in the tools. It will just give a user-friendly message now. This tool uses an uh, external command uh, from PC raster that is opened in the background. Later I will show you how to execute those commands if you want to have more options than are now available in the interface. Click close and let's look at the difference. And now we can see that it's clipped. Now let's check if the pixel size is also changed to the one of the clone. So I here open the original and there I can uh, read that uh, it is uh, a scalar map. That's nice that that gives it in the properties. And this is the pixel size with a lot of uh, decimals and certainly not 30 meters. And after the resample, our clipped version, it keeps it scalar of course, but now our pixel size is 30 meters. It also gives the projection and the statistics. Now I check the clone. And there I also see the data type Boolean and I see that it's 30 by 30 meters. We've also fixed a bug with the lookup tool and I'm going to demonstrate this by converting this uh, road TIFF to PC raster format in the Boolean data type. So it has uh, three classes, zero is no road, one is a dirt road and two is tarmac. Copy the style to the PC raster layer. And what we will use is this to uh, look up table from RAT, raster attribute table. And therefore we need to create a raster attribute table first. We can do that by installing a plugin, the raster attribute table plugin, which is now available in the repository. Click uh, install.
And after installing this plugin, I can see an extra option in the context menu to add a new attribute table. Choose the GDAL format. Now we can click Open Raster Attribute Table and toggle on the editing. In the table we see the colors, we see the cell values, count field and the class field. By changing the class field I can create a lookup table. After toggling on the editing I will change value 2 in 1 so no row is 0 and all the rows are value 1. You can also use that to classify, so you see now the colors changing. And I saved the changes. Then I use the tool lookup table from RAT and I save the file. You can quickly check it by uh, opening a terminal or looking for the file with a uh, notepad. And this is how it looks like exactly in the lookup format. So I use the lookup tool, I choose the roads nominal, I select our lookup table. Choose the output data type, in our case that's boolean, road or no road, and give it an output name. And after running, we find our roads boolean layer, and with palleted unique values we can check that it is boolean indeed. Next I would like to show you some updates from the PC Raster repository for the QDS resource sharing plugin. With the QDS resource sharing plugin, you can share a repository with scripts and models, for example. You can install the plugin from the Plugins Manager. And after installation, you can find this green button. It comes with some pre-installed links to uh, repositories, but we are going to add the PC Raster one under Settings, click Add Repository, give it a name, And then you need to paste the link from the GitHub repository that is made for sharing uh, resources. And make sure you add .git to the name, otherwise it will not work. Now you can find three collections in there. To install them, go to All Collections, and there you will also find them. So there's the QGIS PC Raster model collection which adds now, in this case, three models. And there's the PC Raster user script collection for sharing scripts from users. It has four of them. It also has a script collection, but this is not used anymore. It is replaced by the PC Raster tools plugin, so don't use that anymore. So I have uh, models and scripts added to the processing toolbox, and I can now uh, play around with that. Let's add a digital elevation model and uh, use that for this pollution model. I'm going to create a polygon layer uh, for the pollution that we're going to uh, route using this model. So, new scratch layer, pollution. You can choose a point, but I will use a polygon here. And use the correct projection of the project. Give it an ID that we want to use for the routing, and uh, click OK. Let's create a little polygon for the source of the pollution, add the ID, and now fill it in. We also need a local drain direction, but we don't have that yet, so we need to calculate that. That's easily done. Under the hydrology tools, you find there LDD create. Use the DEM, you can keep the defaults and save it. Click run. And there's the local drain direction map, which is the PC Rusted terminology for the flow direction map. Use pollution, the ID, the LDD, and then you can run the tool. And this will give the flow of pollution from the source and how it accumulates over the flow direction. You can also get the flow path where all the pixels get the same value as the ID number.
you can modify this model. Here is the whole uh, model and you see that uh, different tools are used from Jido and from PC Raster. You can mix them and uh, you can use this as inspiration to develop your own graphical models in the QGIS graphical modeler. Another example is this one for creating automatically the subcatchments. You need to provide a minimum strata order. This is a very small catchment, so we keep the number very low. And uh, when we style it, you'll see that it creates many uh, subcatchments here. And it always looks very colorful. Now you can also have a look at how that works. So here's the complete model that uses the different PC raster tools for deriving this result. Another thing I would like to show is some of the scripts. So they are not graphical models, but they are Python scripts uh, using functionality from QGIS and PC raster. And there you can make these kind of tools like burning in the river system. So I have here a Boolean layer with rivers, and I can burn that in the DEM to force the water to flow over the um, uh, rivers to follow it better than uh, without burning them into the DEM. Let's have a look at the difference by giving it a, a ramp. Copy the style. And there we see before and after burning. I also made a tool to calculate the average of a map. So it's a global raster function which results in the average value uh, for the total map. You can find it there in the statistics. And I can do the same for the other layer. And then I can compare the average before and after burning. You can also use the identify tool to get the value. Same way there's a tool for uh, calculating the median. The median value in the DM is 222. You can also run a model there, the Potrat model, which I will demonstrate. I want to show some pro tips. If you open a terminal from the QGIS browser panel, you can use the PC raster commands from the command line. This is useful if, if you want to go beyond the functionality provided by the user interface of the PC Raster Tools plugin. Some of the commands like call to map or resample have many more arguments that you can use, but they are not implemented in the interface. Let's open another terminal. And here you can also use the Agila command from PC Raster to visualize maps. And this is useful, for example, if you want the flow direction map uh, using this visualization with uh, arrows. You can check the documentation of Agila for a lot of other functionality for visualization. For example, I can drape the LDD over the DEM in 2D. I can also visualize the DEM in 3D. This does not work with the LED. We can use it for our roads map, for example. And if you use two maps, then you can put them side to side and they are linked and you can query the values. So thank you for watching. I hope you're now up to date with the latest of the PC Raster Tools plugin. There's much more to come, so uh, check out new upcoming videos and uh, subscribe if you want to get updates. And looking forward to uh, make new videos for you.